Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to the big autopsy video. Now if you have no idea at all what I'm talking about, this is Miles. And for the last nine days this tiny little engine has been running around a small circuit of track in my loft. And in that time he completed over 340 miles, over 180,000 laps of the track, he ran for 216 hours without a break, and in scale miles he completed over 26,000 miles, which is more than all the way around the world. Now these models are extremely durable as this demonstrates and in fact these amazing little models are still available to buy. In fact you can buy them from Hattons for £25 I think or 24 something like that. So they'd make a great Christmas present if you want to pick up a model that will do over 300 miles or whatever. Uh, a truly robust model for a marvellously low price. Uh, there is a link in the description so feel free to pick one up if you'd like to uh, before they all disappear. But the idea of today's video is of course the autopsy. How has such a long run without to break affected this model. The first question of course is how does this model run now that it's cooled down? Obviously at no point during the experiment had she run without you know being completely warmed up but how will she run now from cool uh, having not had any servicing at all? So let's take her down onto the track and find out. All right so for the first time ever here goes Miles down onto the main layout. Never done this before. So the big question does he still work from cold after all that torture? Yes, <laughs> not particularly nicely. Oh, and he's never actually gone backwards before. As you can see, he runs a lot nice, more nicely forwards than he does backwards. But in, in essence, he still works more or less just fine. I was not expecting that. So yeah, amazing. I can't believe that he still works. But for now, let's take a look what he looks like inside. Let's see what this has done to the mechanism. Alright, so the first observation is that it's swimming in oil, and the reason for that is that unfortunately I didn't have the luxury of sitting down with this model and you know taking time and oiling it properly. It was really just a case of whipping it off the track for as short a period as I could and blobbing oil onto all of the moving parts from the underside. Uh, so it's noticeably very, very oily. Um, yeah, it's swimming with oil, as you can see. Let me try and get a close-up. So, again, that's not how a loco should look, but obviously this is a very special circumstance. Okay, so let's get the body off. Let's get the main sort of chassis slash body off. I don't know what you call it, but we'll have a look inside. Let me try and get this off as gently as I can, and we'll take a look at the actual mechanism. So I'm taking the, the main chassis off here. Okay, so there it is. Uh, just swimming in oil as you can see. The wheel set doesn't feel too loose or anything like that. I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart and we'll have a closer look. Oop, the rods are all exposed. Let me get this apart and I'll be back with you in just a second. So here it is basically dismantled, we've got the motor here, we're going to be opening up the motor in just a second and having a good look at what exactly has been uh, the effect of this massive experiment. But first of all I'm going to attempt to get the pickups out, and if I can't do that then so be it, but I'm going to try to get them out and have a look at how worn they're looking. Okay, so here's a close look at the pickups after, what, nine days of complete and utter non-stop running. Uh, if I just clean this off a bit you can see that it is pretty worn down looking. Uh, I don't know really how long they're supposed to be but there's uh, certainly not an awful lot left of this thing uh, and it's worn quite thin down towards the end. Uh, the one at the back here is a bit longer as you can see that one's a bit more substantial but you can see in comparison that this one here has obviously been uh, wearing a little bit more against the wheel than the other one. There you are. Can you see them both at the same time? So that's quite interesting. Uh, I'm going to try and put that back in, but later on, when I've had a chance to uh, do the video, I won't bore you with that. But now I'm going to get the motor open, and we'll have a look inside at the brushes. That's going to be very interesting. Okay, I think it's coming apart. Let's see if I can get this in shot, that would be nice. Oh, yep, it's coming. Oh, the wrong bit's coming. Hang on, let me cut this off. There we are. 
Well, would you know it? Nine days on, and those brushes look perfectly usable to me. They don't look as though they've had an awful lot of use at all. Uh, now, is one larger than the other? Uh, no, not particularly. Uh, I was wondering whether one would be huge and the other one wouldn't be. Uh, but no, they both look to be roughly the same, I would say. Uh, there's quite a lot of debris, as you can see, inside the... Uh, the motor housing there uh, which is interesting but uh, apart from that that looks perfectly you know serviceable and usable uh, as you can see there's been quite a lot of gunk drop out of the motor um, onto the yeah onto the table here which I wasn't really expecting uh, the commutator looks about all right uh, let me just give it a little bit of a clean with a cotton bud hold it still yeah, I mean, that looks perfectly serviceable. It's a little bit dirty looking, but it doesn't look like it's been flashing over or anything like that. Uh, the, the armature looks brand new, doesn't it, really, more or less. You could you could tell somebody that was brand new if you polished up the, the commutator. Um, no sort of burn marks on it or anything like that. It looks absolutely fine. And the brushes are not really that worn either. Uh, I thought there would be nothing left on them. But there's plenty. There is absolutely plenty. I'm not sure how long they would have been to start with, really. Um, but, as I say, there's quite a lot left. There are some shavings, I've noticed, inside the magnets. Or near the magnets. Let's see. Can you get those? Can you see that? Quite a bit of dirt on the inside of the motor, which I think is quite interesting. Let's do that again. So, clean cotton bud. Quite a lot of guff inside the motor. Let's get a focus on that. Yeah, so there has been some wear and tear, but it's not significant, not really. Okay, so I've put the motor back together. Let's see if it still works. Yep. And I should also point out that this motor was not oiled at all for the duration of the experiment. Uh, of course, I oiled, I oiled the underside of the model quite extensively, but never the motor. So that's pretty, that's pretty shocking, really. Looking very closely at the wheels, you can just about see where the track was, and there's a sort of darker area on the wheels where the track uh, didn't touch. Uh, so that's quite interesting as well. You can see the way it's worn there. Um, the... I will sort of compare the flanges and things to other locos and such. Uh, it's going to be hard to do that, really, so I don't think we're going to get any meaningful results from there. But you can also see the worm as well, or the worm drive, rather. Uh, again, it's going to be hard to compare that. It's going to be hard to measure. Uh, but something I can, of course, measure is the wear on the track, so I will try and do that. Uh, but for now, I'm going to try and put this model back together. I'm going to try and get it uh, serviced up. I'm trying to clean it up a little bit, get it back into working order. And then we'll have a look at the track and see how the experiment affected that. Okay, so that is Miles back together and working again. I did try to take one of the crank pins out so that we could have a look and see how it's affected that, but the wheel ended up coming off with it, so I've decided not to go down that avenue. Um, but they do look all right, and uh, you know I can't really see any particular wear that's gone on with those too badly. Uh, so I think it's safe to assume that those were all right. So now then, let's move on to the track, and we're going to find out just how much wear has taken place on these pieces of track. Uh, so that is one of the straights. Uh, that I was using during the experiment. Uh, this is one of the curves I was using in the experiment and this is a, a curve that was not used in the experiment. It's brand new. I've only just extracted it uh, from the, uh, the train set that it came from. It doesn't seem to be sitting very flat in fact, which isn't too great. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. Okay, I've swapped it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on, but uh, they seem to be a little bit bent up. Perhaps not stored them quite as I should. Anyway, I've bought this uh, little caliper, as you can see, and this allows you to measure very, very, uh, you know, exact distances in terms of width and that sort of thing. Uh, for example, my finger there currently is measuring 16.2 millimeters. So we're going to measure the track depth of this brand new piece of track, uh, which is, of course, uh, not worn at all. It hasn't had any wear on it whatsoever. So if I take that out of there, we measure that at 4.4 millimeters. I'm going to do that again just to make sure that we're all right because it's now dropped to 4.3. So on the new piece of track, we're measuring 4.4 millimetres, and that's the uh, total height of the track. Let's try that now with a piece of straight uh, that was used in the experiment. So I'm going to try and measure it in exactly the same way and see if there's any difference in depth. Right, so yeah, actually the, the straight seems to be deeper for some reason, don't know why that is. But let's try it with the curve though and see if that's any different. I suppose it's probably better to measure a curve and compare it against another curve. That one gave me 4.7 millimetres. Uh, so it seems that for some reason it's caused the track to swell, or it could just be that it's a different you know, set of track or something like that. Uh, it doesn't seem as though there's been an awful lot of difference, put it that way. Um, 
it doesn't seem really as though there's been anywhere noticeable at all on the track, uh, which is exactly what you want, to be honest. Okay, so now let's look and see whether the inside line is uh, experienced any different wear to the outside line. Uh, it should be quite interesting, obviously, because more weight should have, in theory, have been applied to the outside line, but I'm not exactly sure about that, so let's find out. Again, it, it does seem as though the track hasn't worn at all, so we'll have to see. I'm getting 4.6 millimeters on that particular rail, that's the inside rail, and on the outside rail, I'm getting also 4.6 if I try and show you that oops no I couldn't show you it but it was also 4.6 so there was basically no extra wear on the outside rail which basically suggests that there was no wear so that's the autopsy uh, the track seems as far as I can tell perhaps this uh, caliper doesn't go you know quite as far as it needs to uh, in terms of accuracy in order to determine the wear but it is so minimal unfortunately that I can't measure it with this uh, and that is to you know a tenth of a millimeter so we're talking a tiny amount of wear if there was any but I wasn't able to detect any the loco is just fine let's take her down onto the track or him it is him we named him miles uh, well done to the clever person who thought of that name see how he runs now having had a good service okay let's give this a shot then let's pop her down onto the track now bear in mind one of the wheels came off while I was servicing it it was my fault I was trying to pull the crank pin out uh, but this loco has been through some very very serious ab abuse over the last couple of weeks and as you can see, basically, it runs beautifully, absolutely beautifully. Uh, has stopped on the express points, but apart from that, she is doing absolutely fine. And she's going to continue to run on my railway in my collection, uh, probably for many years to come. So I am truly amazed by just the endurance of these tiny little locos. For 25 quid, uh, you can't really say better than that. The abuse I've hurled at this model uh, over the past few days has been phenomenal. And for her to run just as nicely as that, let's try a crawl. It's not a bad crawl, is it? To say that she's done, you know, 340 miles. Yeah, absolutely astonishing. Uh, really, really was not expecting her to go as far as that. I thought these were cheap, nasty locos that were bunged into train sets. And that seems not to be the case. They seem to be really, really hard-wearing, long-lasting models. So as I say, there's a link in the description if you want to buy one of these. £24, I think it was, and one of these can be yours. And maybe yours will also go 340-odd miles for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the challenge as much as I did. It was thoroughly interesting and enjoyable. And as I say, for this loco to have done 341 miles was uh, completely unexpected. And of course, she's still working just fine after the fact as well. So who knows how many more she'll do for me in the future. Or he, in fact, as it's miles. I've been calling him she the whole time incorrectly. And I guess this final moment of miles is no different. Anyway, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Cheers, everybody.